I want to just be an advocate for guys, man, because um, I be around a lot of women and they expose their hand. And a lot of guys, especially guys with money, if you got a lot of it, you probably not going to pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. And then there's guys that don't have any money that are trying to buy a woman, mm-hmm. you know, and that's not, you're not going to get far with that. And I want to bring that to life. I want to expose that because, you know, listen, the woman is the prize, but we also the prize as well. Facts. Like we ain't got to be blowing bags to try to get women. Like mm-hmm. you have to bring something else to the table. like personality. You know, like it, it's so much else that you can bring besides right. money. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I want to like make guys realize. Like it's not about the money. I don't, look, I'm this guy and I don't spend any money. Right. You know what I'm saying? People expect for me to be buying bags and buy, I don't buy nothing. People, mm. the women love being around me mm. and I made it that way. Mm. So I try to preach that like, listen, Let's work on yourself, bro. Let's not worry about women. Mm. Women are just a byproduct of, of being like successful, being like fit. Welcome to the Path to Prosperity Podcast, where we help you make, manage, and multiply money. I am Ash Cash, the financial motivator, here with Storm Leroy, the employed millionaire, hey, and Marvin Mitchell, yeah, Mr. Become Your Own Bank. And yeah, we got the guy in the oh, building, shoot. our guy, Mr. Finesse. Finesse. What up, brother? Yeah, 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 this is, this is a, 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 an exciting uh, episode because when I tell you, um, finesse is man, uh, king of marketing, uh, uh the king of relationships. <laughs> like Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, like vo- the voice for the men against gold. Niggas. Look, the, the, right, the voice for the men. Um, who, who, who is finesse in your words, man? I'm like, Jonathan Dupaton, you know. Like, um, who, who's the real finesse? <clears throat> well, you know, I am a marketer, I am an entertainer, you know, of course, I got the podcast. I'm a hustler, you know, I'm a business owner, mm. I'm an entrepreneur, um, I'm an artist, you know, like I'm so many things, I got so many facets to what I, I got going on, like I'm just not one thing, and I mm. want to put myself in the box. Yeah, no, I love it. It's funny because that that's why uh, before a lot of the celebrities started doing it, that's why like my website is I am Ash Cash, yeah, yeah. My, my handle is I am Ash Cash, because when I first came out, people used to ask me like, yo, who are you, what are you? I'm like, yo, I'm Ash Cash, yeah, like yeah. I'm not... Like don't put me in a box. Just mm-hmm. like just I could do I could do anything. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. uh, I appreciate that. Talk, talk to us. How, how did how did you get your start? Um, yeah. You know, in this like media world. Uh man. Um, I gotta take it back. You know, because if if I if I don't mention this, I had I gotta mention prison. Yep. And um, prison is what kind of shifted my life. That was like the pivotal moment in my life. And I, I was sat in prison for two three years. And I started thinking of ways to like uh, separate myself from this scammer title. Mm-hmm. You know, like I did a scamming thing, but that that wasn't me. You know, like I, want, I didn't want to be boxed in as that. So I came up with the finesse thing. Like, yo, listen, I, I just finessed the situation. Mm-hmm. And so when I came out, I came up with the brand Rich and Unemployed, Finesse's Only Club. I also got Fraud, which is Finally Rich After Unstoppable Determination. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something else too. Like, uh, I ain't even put that out yet, Ooh, for real. Man. Man, that's what's the first time I'm hearing now. Um, but that's going to be like the power uh, the, the scamming version of power, you know, like mm. power is nothing about drugs. So I'm gonna make a like a scamming, finessing version of power. So, finally, rich after unstoppable determination. Look out for that. Um, what was the question? <laughs> no, I don't know. We, we, so we just talked oh. about in a previous episode. Um, once trust is lost, can trust be regained? Yeah. Right. So you just mentioned you had a situation, but that's not who you were. Yeah. yeah. But like, I don't think anybody labels you as that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so 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 how did you like how were you able to turn something like that prison mm-hmm. for something that was undesirable around to now you've you've turned a word into an acronym mm-hmm. for success? Like and, and you regain trust of, the, of an entire community. So how how did that happen? I didn't want to hide it. You know, like mm-hmm. some people like hide their stories. That's that's my journey. This is what I've been through. Yeah. So there's no need for me to hide it. No no need for me to be ashamed of it. Like this is what I went through, and I grew from that. Yeah. And let me let me show like 
my vulnerability. You know, like it's people that are going through the same situation that I've been through, or they they're looking from afar and judging people from that. Like, oh, well, he went to prison for this, and that's all he's about. But I came out and and transformed. Yeah. You know, turned into a whole nother person, rebranded myself, marketing myself a little different. And so. It's all about just like the brand behind it. You know, like yeah. I, I try to preach, of course, it's a lot of toxicity, but the guys trust me because I speak facts. You know, like yeah. I'm not speaking from a guy that just wants to like manipulate you. Like I'm not trying to sell anything. You know right. what I'm saying? So like, why not trust me? I'm not trying to gain nothing from me producing content and feeding you. I'm feeding people. You know what right. I mean? Like I'm yeah. feeding knowledge from what I've been through. And th and that's one of the reasons, like, when so first of all, when I found out you was Zoe, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get upset, but you know, cause, Storm, cause Storm wanna be an honorary Haitian. So anytime <laughs> I start talking, I, I, I start saying sac passe and all that stuff, he get upset. So when I first when I found out you was a Zoe, I was like, oh, I, I like this guy. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think what 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 you know attracted me to your brand even more is when I learned about your story. Cause when I first saw you, I'm like, yo, who is this dude? Whatever. And then I went to your page. And you have this documentary that like talks about yeah, like yeah. your story. And I think that level of vulnerability, that level of honesty, that level of um, kind of like pulling back the curtain and like yeah. letting people kind of see you as you are, um, there's power in that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because it allows people to kind of understand who is the man behind behind this, right? Yeah. And one of the things that I that I, you know, I mean, you know, uh, one of our other episodes. Where you know salute, salute salute to Jacoby who actually shouted you out on the episode. Um, he talked about um, sort of you know your methodology of mm -hmm. gaining attention, and I even I, you even posted this recently, and I was like, yo, it's it's so genius. Where you talked about an episode where for like an hour, you know, you giving motivation, inspiration, yeah. all that stuff in the last ten minutes. Yeah. Is what like people started clipping up. They started calling you the devil, yeah. but it got the eyes. Talk about that methodology if you could. Like I, I really wish I could like on Instagram like preach that type of stuff, like the health mm -hmm. and stuff that that I go through, um, like motivational stuff. But I know that stuff is not gonna get traction. Yeah. Like I understand that. So like for me to get more attention, like attention is the currency for me. Mm -hmm. So the more eyes that I have, the more traffic that I could drive to wherever I'm trying to get it to. So I know people are not gonna just click on the YouTube based off of me giving a motivational spiel to the guys. You know, mm -hmm. like, it's a lot of that stuff going around. But, like, I know that if I say some bullshit, mm -hmm. I'm going to ruffle some feathers. 100%. The comment section is going crazy. Yep. I'm all over uh, spiritual word. I'm all over right. these blogs and yep. off of a few clips. Yep. But if you go to the episode, I didn't talk about to the end. I'm talking about my best fest journey. I'm talking about, like, my health journey. Like, I'm, I, I, I'm talking about my 14-day fast mm -hmm. and i wanted to post that but i'm like man that shit ain't gonna do no numbers bro, man bro, give us a couple of examples of some of your most viral moments okay? oh lord um <laughs> one was was the uh transsexual um, yo that joint was yo <laughs> oh, that wait, was wait, crazy from <laughs> st louis oh man so uh that was definitely one that was very strategic um i had seen Yo, City was you uncomfortable though? Like, 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 like very, I'm, very, I'm, very comfortable. Right no, because yo, I, yo, honestly <laughs> though, like, 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 I've been, um, and I, and I, and I'm actually at some point, um, I'm gonna interview, you know, you know, a, a transsexual woman, uh -huh. and but, but I've been nervous, like, 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 I want to say two years ago, um, somebody, you know, uh, was like, yo, you should interview this person or whatever, mm -hmm. and, um. I was like, hell no. Like, I was just like, <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing it. And it wasn't, you know, it, it, was, it was like just lack of knowledge, if you yeah. will, What's of understanding, like, 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 I'm not that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I don't understand that. So, and, and because I don't understand it, I'm like, you know, I have my opinions of it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Cash, cash, and big freedom. <laughs> so I mean, but no, but 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 you know, I, I'm I'm actually at a space where it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me, right? Like, yeah, yeah. if Big Frida got a story mm -hmm. that can help my audience, then I'm cool, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. But like, what, what, that, but the reason why for you, I was like, like, like I was asking like that uncomfortable moment mm -hmm. is because go watch this. Bro. She was actually coming on to you though. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Oh, oh. Man, you interviewed the transsexual? Yup. Oh, it, I missed that. Yo, man. very. Yeah, talk about. That. Oh yeah. The yeah. most entertaining episode. Um, like I, I wanted to do 
an interview like that, but um, I was skeptical. I was scared because I was like, yo, like, I don't know like, if my audience going to react to it. And I didn't do it for a while, but when Sydney Starr came and liked or commented on one of my uh, reels, I was like, yo, yo, come on the show. Yeah. And that but was just the perfect that's yeah, what Sydney Starr. Yeah, yeah. So when when um, Sydney came over, I was like, yo, listen, you know I be flirting with all the women on the show, but you know damn well I cannot <laughs> with you. <laughs> I cannot do that with you. So I need you to reverse that and make me just uncomfortable as possible. Mm. And he was like, oh, bet. Let's do it. Wow. But I wasn't ready for what was coming out of her mouth. You know what I'm saying? He was like, let me see your dick. And yo. But I was I was saying shit to him to push that button. Like, yo, you got a deep voice? Or, like, you still got your dick? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, we, we got the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, let's just, like, I, it was, <laughs> I had to invite some girls over just so I wouldn't, like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Real talk, I had girls in the background, like, just so I can still feel manly and not be tripping, because looking at it, it's like it's tricking your mind. Right. And <laughs> But I, I did it because I knew that it's a lot of transgenders out there that, that are tricking men. Right. And oh, Sydney yeah. was ready to expose that. You know what I'm saying? Like, what she been through and how she right. tricked men. And a lot of guys didn't like it. Like, man, damn, why you keep posting this trans? But she's really giving out game. Like, right. she's yeah. showing you or telling you how she tricked men right. into getting into those, into those situations. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, men be a little thirsty and you don't be thinking. And it's all you gotta do is just observe and right. kind of just be patient and look right. at what's going on. Right. Some guys just stick their dick in whatever right. and be mad and want to kill somebody later. Right. It's, it's not their fault. Yeah. You should have paid attention. Yeah. But she really exposed what was going on and it was her education. I took it as entertainment and education. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was the most entertaining and I knew what it was gonna do because I know how I do on camera and I know she's a, a entertainer. Mm -hmm. and. It just worked. It worked like magic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. How, how has um, or or how is your online persona different from your offline persona? Mm. Are they one and the same, or is is there a, is there a difference? No, it's two different things. Like yeah. I, it's like I turn on the switch. Mm. Um, it's like an alter ego. Yeah. But it's me. But like in person, I'm more chill, reserved. You know, like I don't just be just loud and talking shit all the time. Like I'm a real chill person. Like yeah. if I go to a party, like I'm I'm chilling in the cut. Yeah, I don't I don't even like attention like that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, bro. Like yeah. I know how to dress to to bring that attention towards me, but I don't really like too much attention. My yeah. birthday, I don't like big parties and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I'm real chill. But on the internet, I do that shit like it's just like I just turn on a switch, bro, yeah. and I and it took me a while to like learn that. Like I would like study myself, yeah. and I would study people in the comments how they would react to me, and I just keep pushing the button. I just keep yeah. like adding to like the repertoire. Like I just I don't know. Like it's just a, it's it's a character, but it's me. It's just another version of me. Yeah. Like if I'm on the basketball court, shit, I'm I'm cursing, and you might think I want to fight you or something. But right. when we get off the court, it's like yeah, you know what I'm saying. But it was just I was just in a different mode. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's me on camera. I'm just in a different so when, mode. So when did you discover that you had that? You had that. It was when I started sitting on the couch with women. Mm. Um, once I started sitting on the couch with women, it started like I started seeing myself like I don't know. I can I can engage so well with these women, mm -hmm. and I just started being getting more into it, just more yeah. like just pushing the button. Yo, the other day I did an episode and I sucked this woman's toes on camera, and I Whoa. felt so disgusted. Bro, is that did that that area? No, it didn't air yet, but <laughs> I thought about it for five minutes before I did it. Like I was rubbing this chick feet on camera, and I was like. I gotta do it for this show, man. I know I gotta do this it. Is in the midst of the recording, yes. you're thinking about it. Yes, I'm thinking about it. We're talking, I'm like, <laughs> You like your toes sucked? She's like, Yeah. I was like, fuck. <laughs> but I know what it's gonna do. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. I know exactly what it's gonna do when it right. hit the internet. You know what I'm saying? So all this stuff is like strategic. And then yeah. outside of that, way, like when it when you see me on camera with these women, like I don't touch these women at all. Like mm -hmm. at when we get done. This is all entertainment for me. Like, mm -hmm. I do not touch these women. I let them go about their way. We might go to dinner and kick it, but I do not have, like, sexual relationships with these mm. women. And people, it's hard to believe. No, and, that, and, that, and that's what I was going to say, though. Yeah. Cause I, think, I think that one of the things that, um, I'll be honest, men kind of live vicariously through you, uh -huh. though. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, like, like as a married man myself, you know, been with my, my wife over 20 years, Shout out to that. I remember, I remember when I was yeah, yeah. Jim Duncan. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I could, when I, you know what I'm yeah. trying to say? When I could bag the joints. Uh -huh. And so when I, like, like I, I watch your content and I be like, oh my God, <laughs> oh, he got it. So like, I yeah. live, no, I'm serious though. I, I'm not, I'm serious. I, I live vicariously through you. So like, I be watching. Oh, no. Like a prat, I'll be like, yo, <laughs> yo, and, and, and then when I hit it, like when it, when the chicks be like flirting with you and shit, yeah. I'll be gotta, like, yo, that's my. <laughs> you gotta say what's the, what's the funniest moments of, for me, 
I don't know. This one episode caught by attention just had me rolling, bro. You was talking to the uh, the phone sex operator person. Remember what I'm talking about? The phone sex operator? Damn, you don't even remember. This is what Yo, I'm talking about, bro. Be... How can you you talk to somebody who who she was? She literally did sex talk, just her voice. You don't remember that? Wait. Oh, sh- man. But it was hilarious, bro. You got to go back and watch. Was it alive? No, nah, it was on one of your um, at the door. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't lie. I but but where you lie. like? Do, do, do like? Do you reach out to them? Do they reach out to you? Like, where do, where do you? Uh, how do you get them? Yeah, because uh, they got a, like a lot. Most of them have like large followings. Yeah, it, it's either the DM. Yeah, or I see them in person, or I don't, it just happens. Yeah, yeah like right. when I see the opportunity, I'm going for it. But some mm-hmm. a lot of women want to come on the show. Yeah, they want it. I be I gotta ask them like, yo, you single? Because I do not want no smoke from nobody, yeah, right, bro. Right, right, right. Like, so yeah, let me yeah. know so I can know how to play the situation. But a lot of women are scared as well, too. Like, they don't want to come on because I give that that energy, like, that's all he does. And I don't want to be known as just the right. guy that just flirt with every woman that come on the show. Right. It's just the fact that the, these type of women, like the loving hip-hop girls, that's... They know how to engage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's entertainment for them. Yeah. So, like, they they we bouncing off each other and... This Nia Lee, the, the last chick I did, she had the blue hair on my mm-hmm. and the yellow dress. She called me yesterday. She was like, yo, while I'm walking through the airport and this lady stopped me and was like, yo, how was it? She was like, what you talking about? She was like, with finesse. <laughs> She's like I, like, I know y'all like had sex after that. Like, how's oh, the relationship wow. with him? And she was like, yo, these people are really buying into this shit. Wow. So, like, they are fully invested into this show. Wow. And I, but I don't want to be known as just that guy. I know right. it's very entertaining, but I want to have, like, I want to get Michelle Obama on the show right. one day. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> one day. Let me, let me see you. Hey. Let me see you. Hey. Hey. Oh, <laughs> Michelle Obama, if you see this, you heard it here first. Whoa. I want to get Michelle Obama on the show, and it's like, okay, I gotta like I gotta start, up a start bit, like catering the content towards like, okay, I gotta have okay this flirt flirting episode, but then I gotta give some powerful stuff, yeah. and I gotta mix it in between. You know, what yeah. I just can't give him just one thing. Yeah, yeah. Michelle, yeah. Michelle Obama. No, if you, you also see gotta get a nonprofit in place. Yeah, you know, so I gotta get a things, wife you know? on there. You know right. what I'm saying? So right. different well. women. The concept of the show is to just have conversations with women yeah. mm-hmm. and getting their perspectives on life, relationships, and you know, and throw a little flirting in there. That's all. Yeah. I mean. Are you are you in a relationship? Or oh, can, can, oh. can you can you even be? A damn, 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 damn. He just going <laughs> good straight times. For juggernaut. No, I'm curious. Uh, like, I'm like, is, 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 for that, a long that, time. That, is, is that one of those? Because 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 I, I remember back in the day, the R and B singers and all that. They want to. Yeah, they yeah. want to yeah. say, is that don't one of those destroy things? a woman's dream. Hey. Gotcha. No, no. Right, so don't answer that. That, that, that was on one it. of those uh, <laughs> notes <laughs> that we got. <laughs> look, 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 he got I didn't read the note, man. His team brought that over. Don't ask me about relationships. No, I can answer it. Um, so for a long time, I avoided relationships only because. Um, women couldn't handle what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want somebody to come in my life and try to lock me down and tell me that I can't do certain things on camera. That you got to understand, this is only entertainment for me. So I would avoid relationships and serious situations because of that. But then I found someone that was just completely open, mm-hmm. com- open about what I do on camera, open about me talking to other women, mm-hmm. open about me mm-hmm. having another girlfriend or not. So I was like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Open about what? Mm-hmm. Having another girlfriend. So open relationship. That's what I'm. T- t- open on my side. Right. Okay, I got yeah, you. yeah, yeah, side, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, 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 so you had to distinguish that. So she not allowed to be open. No. But you can be open. Yes. Yes. Right. And she's and she's completely okay with. Completely it. open with it. Like she she watches me. You know, wow. like she she she's, she sees what I does. Wow. That's a good understanding. Yeah. That's a real good understanding because he might be just a little bit too Whoa. much for <laughs> right. him for, for her. For one so she's like, next. you know what? No. <laughs> you know what? It, it's. At least if she has a knowing or some kind of a understanding of the situation, she won't be in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. He might never go that route. But yeah. the point is, it's there for him. Right. Yeah. And it's so, an understanding. So, so do you bring up that understanding or does she bring it up? Hey, I know you like this, man. I know you like this. It was this her. Angle. So it was her. She it was her. She, oh, she was like, God why don't good. you make me a girlfriend? <laughs> God is good. God is good. <laughs> She God, said, why don't you make me your girlfriend? I was like, yo, I can't do that because of these reasons. And she was like, well, listen, I, I'm not tripping about that. You can do what you want. Yeah. You know, as long as you respect me, keep it honest. And I was like, bet. And, the, and what's crazy about it is once she gave me that, that, that door, that open door, I don't even want you women. Even you know what I'm saying? I don't even, yes. It's the fact yeah. when you lock down, you feel like you can't do it. That's, that's it's right. like you just want to go against the grain. <laughs> yo, right. you storm straight. <laughs> bro. Like, like, storm when men get locked right. down, we feel like, man, just because I can't do it, I want to do it. But the mm. fact that I can do it, it's like, man, I don't even care ain't for even, it. Ain't even 
even there. I don't, don't care need, for it. Storm, not motivated. Storm, talk to us. Listen, <laughs> listen man. Come on, I come from the era before social media. In the uh-huh. 90s, I was hip hop, running around, and we was, we was doing a lot. Yeah, yeah, for and it sure. Could, if social media was around, a lot of people we know, this 50-year hip-hop anniversary wouldn't look like the way it looked now. Mm. <laughs> a lot of people would be in a lot of trouble. But the key was, once we got to a space where the lights did come on in social media and all this did come into play, the best understanding you could have is with someone who understood that I'm this kind of person. Mm -hmm. I have this desire. It may never come up. It may Uh never happen. But guess what? Mm -hmm. Don't put a limitation on me because I'm the kind of person personally, if you tell me I can't do something, I'm I'm going to do it. it. (laughs) I'm going to do it. Just for that. I'm going to do it. I must prove to you that you can live with the repercussions of something you said. (laughs) If you do that to me, I can't be. um, Now what? Now what? Now where you going? Now what? (laughs) You see what I'm saying? So I can relate. Okay. I I, I was that guy. I used to always say I would use my powers for evil. Uh, Now I I try to use my powers for good. good. That's what I try to do. Like I understand the power that I possess (laughs) and I try not to like like abuse it because man, with with great power comes great responsibility. (laughs) And I don't never want to abuse the power that, because when I go out, like I gotta, I gotta, this is like a muscle for me. The more that I use it, Mm -hmm. the more that I talk to women, the more that I flirt with women, the better I get every day. So I can't stop. Mm. I can't stop it. But what comes with <laughs> bro, it is. I relate, bro. I'm what, sitting over here going. Listen, what comes with it is more women in my life. And it's like, damn, like I got to have that discipline. Like, all right, listen, I got to keep it just this conversation and be able to back up out of it. I right, don't Yo, get the What's number. your ratio, though? Do you think you, you, think you, could, you could get any woman? Yeah. 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 Bro, let me, let, me, let me ask you some things, man. Because yeah, listen. Sure. Like, at least nine out of 10. Once you know you're able to talk to a woman in the words. <laughs> yeah. And the way that we speak these words, it mm-hmm. tingles their air. Like my boys used to say, Storm, go over there. Like if, if you could do this, go to, I'd be like, yo, don't make me do this. Cause I don't want to. Cause now I got to go all the way through with it. Mm-hmm. I got to get the number. Now I got to, like, now it's like, now you got the number, what you're going to do? i be like, yo, I thought it was the number first. Now you want me to do, it goes on and on. Uh, it goes on and on. Yeah. Right. But now <laughs> here, here's, here's the thing, bro. When you know that you're able to, talk the way that we talk and we're so upfront about how we feel and what we mm-hmm. say it's really the fact when they get so invested in you and listening to, listening to who you are going I can break him yep oh. Donnie Donnie thing, I can you know change him like that Donnie, don't you be name Donnie dropping the day listen hold Donnie, on shit <laughs> no, no, he already name dropping he name but dropping now women feel like they could they could break me or yes. I, I could be the one to change him yes. is that what she told you Donnie said she could change you. Uh, she said she could break me. Um, but a lot of women feel that way. You know what I mean? But it ain't going to happen. I, don't, I can't be broken. There's nothing that could break this. Mm. Well, let me not say that because it's a, it's a fine woman out there that could. Um, I, would, <laughs> I would marry. You know what I mean? Hold on, bro. This let me tell you, the, the, the only thing that steered me into a different direction is once you get a little older, as you get older, your sense of purpose now goes, what am I going to do with this thing now that I'm getting older? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. It goes from yeah. being an individual achievement, meaning you one-on-one achieve something yeah. right there, to now you want to make this a mass achievement. Because yeah, yeah. if you now you verbalize what you're saying, and now if you change the message, now you're changing people's lives beyond the actual person you're talking to. Mm-hmm. And that's what I realized. Like, what I would always say would be for them. I would uplift you. I would make you feel good. And now, in turn, it's this way. But then once I realize, now I'm going to say something else because now I want to talk to Mm -hmm. your generation. I want to talk to what's coming after you. Mm -hmm. Now the message got bigger. And then the reward became grandioso, but then became the responsibility of now you can never go back to who you were because everything now that you're saying now seems like a lie. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. the thing that you got to get ready Mm -hmm. for. You're right. You got a um a message for men, cause obviously you know as you become more known in this space, yeah, you attract all different types of people, right? Yeah, and um you talked about how a lot of these women I saw on one of your shows are like coming out mm-hmm. here just asking for too much too soon. Like talk mm-hmm. about that a little bit. Yeah, I want to just be an advocate for guys, man, because um I be around a lot of women and they expose their hand and. A lot of guys, especially guys with money, 
if you got a lot of it, you probably not gonna pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. And then there's guys that don't have any money that are trying to buy a woman, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not, you're not gonna get far with that. And I wanna bring that to life. I wanna expose that because, you know, listen, the woman is the prize, but we also the prize as well. Facts. Like we ain't gotta be blowing bags to try to get women. Like mm -hmm. you have to bring something else to the tables, like personality. You know, like it, it's so much else that you can bring besides right. money. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I wanna like make guys realize. Like it's not about the money. I don't, look, I'm this guy and I don't spend any money. Right. You know what I'm saying? People would expect for me to be buying bags and buy, I don't buy nothing. People, mm -hmm. the women love being around me mm -hmm. and I made it that way. Mm -hmm. So I try to preach that like, listen, Let's work on yourself, bro. Let's not worry about women. Yeah. Women are just a byproduct of, of being like successful, being like fit, you know, being like having money. That's just a byproduct. It comes yeah. with it. You know, it, it, yeah. it's easy after that. So I just don't want guys to get tricked. I don't want guys to get used yeah. because they're going to go from one guy to the next and you're going to be left with nothing but some memories and pussy. Man. Ultimately, when you when you see like what you're building, because you like 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 I said, like you have a brand which I love that is it attracts both men and women. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and it's it's a it's a brand um, that as you continue to stay consistent, you know, could become household, right? Mm -hmm. What 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 is what, what is Jonathan's vision for the brand? Whew. So rich and unemployed. Um... I have to gear it towards men now um, and, and create something for men, like a fraternity, a brotherhood, mm. because it's a lot of men that need like that guidance. And I understand the power that I have, you know, like I, I didn't really want to do it, but mm. it's being asked of me. So that's one aspect, creating a, a, a community for guys, yeah. like-minded individuals where we can build off each other. But the podcast itself, um, Myself, I feel like I'm gonna be the number one entertainer in the world. Mm. And the podcast is just gonna open the door for that. Mm. So I'm, I'm showcasing my talents on camera. So when people go back and do their research, like, you know, this guy is just not a podcaster. Like this yeah. guy is really like a comedian, an mm -hmm. artist. Like I, I really, um, pay, like, uh, I'm really conscious of what I do on camera, how I look, the things that I say, the things that I put out. So I'm really setting myself up for the future, to be right. in movies, to be hosting BET Awards, Oscars, whatever. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, wow. I'm, 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 what's the word? Uh, uh, what is the word? Positioning? Not positioning, um, molding, mm -hmm. molding, scoping, molding, scoping, yeah. molding myself for that later on in life because yeah. I'm at some point I'm back away from the podcast right you know it ain't gonna be as consistent I'm gonna move away from that and move on to something else mm -hmm. something bigger but this is just a platform to open that door but while I got this power I have to help the guys that I can if they if these people look up to me if these people want more knowledge from me I, I got to create something for them yeah. so you all got to remember this he spoke the vision yeah so when y'all see him interviewing Michelle Obama don't be surprised yeah. he already sure. spoke right. it Michelle gonna be on the couch existing, something powerful on the tongue <laughs> when you speak when you speak those things out of your mouth as yeah. though they are not, as though they are, it's going to come to pass. So Very you true. see the vision right here. So I've had a lot of conversations with you uh, when you offline. Mm -hmm. It's about how hard you actually work. Mm -hmm. And people think it's just because you got the personality, you got the humor, um, you, can, you can attract a lot of things. Yeah. They may not know the effort and the work that it takes to be who mm -hmm. you are to do what you do. Mm -hmm. And I know how often you work, how often you record. So can you talk a little bit about the work ethic? that it takes on what you're doing to kind of be where you are today? Work ethic, right? When I was, when I was doing fraud, I would, I would shut everything out. You know what I'm saying? I had this method, right? People, someone gave me the recipe and I understood how much money I can make. And I said, you know what, I bet. I know the outcome of this. I didn't go to the club. I didn't talk to women. I didn't do nothing. I focused on that because I know what, if I put enough energy into it, this is what's gonna come out because I have an example. So when it came to podcasts, I understood work ethic. Same thing with basketball. I, wouldn't, I wasn't good at basketball at one point. I worked my ass off two, three years later, I was on a high school basketball team. So I understand work ethic. You gotta lock in and focus. And when it comes to the podcast, people are, are surprised at me blowing up, but I'm not surprised because shit, I'm working every day i'm recording five times out the week and i'm making sure like sometimes i get in the house at two three in the morning from the club and i know i got to drop an episode tomorrow so fuck it let me just record this i know wow. the people need to hear it you know what i mean so i'm i'm going harder than the competition mm. 
I'm going extra hard. So it's like not, it's not me just going viral. I got enough content for me to go viral. Right. Everything doesn't go viral. Yeah. I got enough episodes and clips. So if, if, if one out of these six go viral, I did, that was, that was enough for me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if, if whatever you do, it ain't just podcasts and shit, whatever you do, like you gotta put that work in, that grind, that focus, and yeah. you're gonna see what comes from it. Like another example, right? When I talk to you, when I hear, when I just heard you say you made five million dollars, right? That's the, the recipe, mm -hmm. right? Damn, if he can do it, if I could go do the same thing with fraud, right? I line the numbers up. Oh, if I do this and do this, I get this amount. If you told me you got five million dollars from goddamn getting on a Zoom call mm -hmm. with X amount of people and X amount of people bought, mm -hmm. well, shit, why the fuck I can't do the same? Right. Yeah. I would never do fraud again in my life because. I didn't know that stuff was possible then. You know what I'm saying? I only knew one way, like, yo, listen, we get a laptop, we get these numbers, type, type, and that's what it is. But now it's like, uh, I've been asleep. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know the knowledge. Now I know. Now all I gotta do is just focus. I gotta put focus into like different areas of what I want. Yeah. It's good. To fruition. It's good stuff. Yeah. What what's your what's your um you know thought process on team, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Because I because and I, I could be wrong, but I kind of feel like like you the I I'm gonna get it done right so mm -hmm. like the jack of all trades like I'm gonna get it done. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's, your, what's your thought process on that? Like, is it um, do you you know is it all about all right? I got this vision. No matter what, I'm gonna get it done. Is it you know? Do you have people that you've you know groomed behind the scenes that help you? Like like talk a little bit mm -hmm. about like like you, you, where you are currently from a success perspective. Yeah. Um, right now I have a team. Before. Um, 10 months in, 11 months in, I didn't have nobody working with me. Didn't have an editor, didn't have a, a, a assistant, nothing. Wow. It was just me working by myself, you recording myself, everything. Wow. Everything. And then I finally got an editor and a, like a production team, like a, a three man team last summer. And then I kind of like trained them, um, sh like showed them what I wanted. Um, and then I started getting a, like a, a virtual assistant. I got like three virtual assistants now. So like now it, it's a little machine behind me. Yeah. So I can, I, it's a little more, it's a little easier for me to be creative yeah. because when it, when it, when it was me just doing all the work, I couldn't be as creative because I got to do a lot of thinking, a lot of setting up the cameras, thinking about the light, thinking about the mics. And I can't really think about what's about to happen. Like, okay, y'all just got to sit down. Mm -hmm. I would have to set all this stuff up mm -hmm. and then ah, shit, I bet I ain't had time to think, get yeah. creative or nothing. But if I could just come sit down and I can meditate, think you know it's a, it's a different now i got a i got a machine behind me and the machine is gonna grow yeah. i need more people behind me i ain't even done building the, the team yet but i understand the, the concept of it you need a team for everything mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like yeah. i i just want to do my part yeah i don't have to I, I know my strengths let me do the strength i don't have to like do i, I know cameras and lights and shit like that like i've been doing that yeah. but i don't want to do that that's not my 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 strength is being an entertainer you know what right. i'm saying being creative so and I can't do that without the team. So what's one of the biggest challenges and obstacles you have overall right now in your business? Um, making more money. Okay. Like, um, like not, go deeper into that. What, what do you mean when you say um, making more money? So like I be around you guys, right? Hearing like uh, your business model. And um, I want to apply that as well. So like I'm so much of an entertainer and a creative, like I don't even be thinking about it. Like I be, In my mind, like, yo. I'm gonna make the money. Mm -hmm. Let me just do my part and, and the universe is gonna do the rest. Mm -hmm. But I can't keep hearing five million a, a day. <laughs> right. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? I can't keep hearing that. So like, I gotta take a step back from being creative and work on the business side. Yeah. Money management. Man. Money yeah. management. Yeah, you have to, because you can, you can work extremely hard to make money, but if you never take time to, to manage that money properly, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll go just as fast. Oh yeah, I've been there, done that, yeah, man. Yeah. Been there, yeah, done we that with the down that path one time with the money that. I was making with the other yeah. shit. You know, like yeah. that money was just it was it was quick. I didn't have a goal. I was just making money, spending as fast as it was coming. Mm -hmm. And now that I, I went through that phase in life, like I know exactly what to do with it. Like yeah. not just go blowing on jewelry and so, and bullshit. So what are you doing now? So you taking the money, um, you know, reinvesting you, it right back into the company. All right. Or you have you have you looked at diversifying into anywhere else like creating those not necessarily different streams is going to require effort but just not putting everything back into the company yeah well i gotta squeeze um i can't go into any type of other business venture because right. i'm not done with this you know it's so many uh avenues that i can create with the podcast i gotta i gotta finish that before i get into all this like crypto real estate of course oh, i yeah, want to yeah. do that later on but 
I gotta squeeze life out of this. I gotta squeeze this. You know what I'm saying? The juice, yeah. squeeze the juice about this, this podcast, and that's what I'm struggling with. You know, like I'm not really struggling with. I just got to take a step back from creating. Yeah. Right. So like the month of September, I'm just giving the reruns. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put out no new content. I want to focus on the business. How can I? Man, it's not just I want to make a lot of money. I need to make a lot of money to make an impact. Right. You know, like it's things that I got to do, and I need money for it. Right. How can I create? Because if you think about it, right? Like I'm, I'm sure you've seen sort of like that exponential growth from you doing it yourself to hiring yeah. the team. Mm -hmm. And so to your to your point is that once you get to that space of, all right, now I need to make more money mm -hmm. so I can hire more people on the team so mm -hmm. I can continue to exponentially grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I could def I definitely see that for sure. Re read a book, man, that's called um, Profit First. Profit you heard first. that book? Yeah. No. Profit Good First book. by a guy named Mike Mil uh, Millowitz or Profit something like first. that. Uh -huh. And basically his whole premise is even when you're in growth mode, when we're in growth mode, all we think about is our business. Like how, yeah. man, if I reinvest it back to my business, I can make more money because the best investment you can make is in yourself and in your business. Yes. So we immediately start to think that, which is great, right? Because that's, that's, that's what we do. But if for whatever reason the business hit a tough stretch, you, you, swears, you, you didn't squeeze anything out of it because all the, the limit is still there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is still cool. But what his premise is take a percentage of your business and map out what that percentage is going to be mm -hmm. and just squeeze that little bit out and sit it to the side for a couple of different reasons, not just to get involved in like all of the other stuff that's going to, um, you know, take away your focus from, from what you're doing, but mm -hmm. opportunities for the podcast or for different things are going to come along, come along. that's like outside of the scope yeah, yeah. of what's reinvested back into your business. Mm -hmm. And if you got, if you got some liquidity, you're right, going to have right, the ability right. to take advantage of it mm -hmm. and you don't have to put focus on everything else. You just, so you got to have, um, it, it talks about the profit account and you also got to have a, um, tax account mm -hmm. because I'm telling you, that's the number one thing that destroys us when we're in growth mode. And I know you've been in growth mode like crazy mm -hmm. is taxes ain't going to stop. If you get to the point where everything's reinvested back to the business, then all of a sudden the IRS comes back a year later and say, Oh, we forgot. You owe us an extra fifty thousand or whatever it is, mm. and you're like, "Dang, where are you gonna get that fifty thousand? You gonna get it from the business? You are gonna go out and borrow to get it, to get yeah. it?" So it's just, it's just a way to sort of keep you good because as you grow, like I'm enjoying this growth, and I want to see you on those stages, BT stages everywhere, mm -hmm. interviewing Michelle Obama. All of that's gonna happen. Just make sure you methodically are building it up and keeping some money aside as gotcha. well as you're growing. Gotcha. Yeah, great yeah. information right there. And, and we and we we got to play though, so I ain't gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We gonna wait, bring wait, something wait together. That. Yeah, yeah we, waiting on we, that. We've been we've been uh, we've been cooking behind yeah. the scenes. You know what I mean? Uh, you, so, you ain't gonna let us know what it is. You, you nah, gotta keep it he been right? cooking behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He just hey, the opportunity yeah. presented itself. Like hey, I'm yeah. with it. Was <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, cause I cause cause you know cause so I might say this all the time, right? Like I like I I believe I believe anybody could do anything, but I also believe like certain people are chosen for a specific message and a specific yeah. thing. Um, everything you said about, you know, being on those stages, I think is, is I see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I saw it though, actually, before I even told you I saw it. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, I, and I, was, I was actually behind the scenes, like looking and saying, oh, cause that's, that's one thing I'm really good at. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, like I, I've helped a lot of people behind the scenes and you know, I've, I've never said it publicly and nor do I have to because I don't you know I really don't care about the credit I just really I just believe like all right mm -hmm. this this guy has this message and this message is important to like get to the masses and I just think that that in, in the methodology that you and I talked about I think that that that's going to help it get to that to that mm -hmm. you know to that space um and and, and, and so I, I I love you know being able to see something and be able to assist in any kind of way. So I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm excited. That's good. What is your advice for anybody? Because, because the one thing I, I love about you and your brand is that confidence level, right? That belief mm -hmm. in self is so, um, like you can feel it. Like you mm -hmm. can feel it. Like, like, like you don't attach uh, material things, like you said, right? Like, yo, I get any girl and I don't gotta spend no dollars. Mm -hmm. But even just like watching you amongst your peers even, like, yeah, you you move like a hundred million. You know what I mean? Like you got a hundred million. You know what I'm saying? And and but there's a level of confidence that 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 comes with that. Um, how did you like? How did you build that that confidence? Where does it come from? 
practice. Mm -hmm. um, so you can practice confidence. Tell me about that. Um, so like, it'd be times where like, I'd be nervous, like in situations and I would have to like, give myself talks, like mm. do like, go in the mirror and be like, yo, listen. So it was one time I had to do this crypto conference and I had never got on the stage before. And I was like, yo, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Right. And I had to go in the bathroom for like uh, two minutes and just talk to myself like, yo, listen, you got this, you the man. Like, what are you nervous about? You know, I, I had to give myself these self talks. And mm. then I would get in these situations where, um, like in a, in a networking environment and I didn't know what to say. You know, so I didn't know how to like network, but it's only because I was nervous and didn't know like how. And then I would just put myself in like outside my comfort zone and just just do it. So like when I say practice, it's, it's a part of like acting. Like once you you act confident, mm. it's just gonna be a part of who you are now. Mm. Like then you start noticing like it's really nothing. Right. It's really what am I afraid of? People just we overthink things, and I don't. I just don't overthink. I just do. I just go and react. And one is perception is everything. You know, like I make sure that I look the part. Mm -hmm. You know, looking yeah. the part is definitely number one because if people perceive you a certain way then like you said you might think i got 100 m's Facts. you know so like i don't i never said i had 100 m's but the way that i walk and talk you don't know how much i got but mm -hmm. man you know this motherfucker got something going on the right. way he's just walking and talking so like i practice that and i and i and i i used to act confident mm -hmm. so now it's just second nature mm -hmm. no i love that so it's like the uh the essence mm -hmm. Yeah, you just, uh, the so, essence of being, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and at the end of the day, like that, that, that is the, the methodology though, mm -hmm. right? Like before I ever made millions of dollars ever, you could not tell. Yeah, yeah. I walk in a room, like people would look and be like, yo, I know he's somebody. Right. I have negative, I have negative in my account. For sure. Still, you know what I'm trying <laughs> yeah, to say? Yeah, yeah. Still walk in there and, and mm -hmm. like there's this level of, you know, being yeah, before sure the 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 actual tangible comes about right mm -hmm. like like my you know my back i was a banker right literally when i was a teller i used to wear suits and i used to watch the branch manager and i used to i used to act like him yeah so, just right to say that yeah. and so and so literally as a teller i would wear my suits i would walk out people would think i was a manager they'd be mm -hmm. like excuse me can i ask and i'd be like I don't know, uh -huh. right? <laughs> oh. but 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 it, but but it was really like kind of ha like seeing that vision, being it, and then eight months later I get a promotion. Then yeah. you know what I'm saying, like 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 having that vision, and so you know again my like myself before I made millions of dollars, I always knew I was like nah, like this is mm -hmm. like I'm I'm going to be that, mm -hmm. and so I started to like. Mm -hmm be around people and look at the people who actually had the millions and I was mm -hmm. like, all right, I want some of this. All right, I'm gonna take some of right like, so I created my own vision of mm -hmm. what yeah. a multimillionaire is, which is which is dope because now as a multimillionaire, I'm me still. Mm -hmm. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like I'm not pretending to be yeah. oh I'm gonna be standoffish because yeah, yeah. I see this or mm -hmm. I'm gonna do no like I like I was able to kind of see little bits of people and put them together mm -hmm. and, and and you know allowed it to mm -hmm. become me and law of the universe says what you become will, will you will attract yeah, yeah yeah you know what I'm saying one of mm -hmm. the things about um, Jonathan is that he he's not you not afraid to be an individual you know what right, I mean for you're sure. not afraid to be different than anybody else so you got you got your your style and you say the way you dress mm -hmm. but. Name somebody who dress exactly like you dress. You know what I'm saying? Nobody. It's, it's nobody. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's you're not afraid to walk in your individuality. And mm -hmm. I know, like I was like Ash, like when I was um, starting my career as an advisor, and I, I would tell the people, my managers and stuff, said I'm gonna wear a suit and tie every day because mm -hmm. I'm gonna fake it till I make it. For you know, sure. I'm gonna fake mm -hmm. it till I make it. Mm -hmm. But then as I, but I was still struggling. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? I was doing okay, but I wasn't like I wasn't doing what I'm doing right now. It mm -hmm. was really only. When I stepped away and I actually said, you know what, that's not me. I was afraid to grow facial hair. Mm -hmm. I would shave all my facial hair because I'm in St. Louis. 75% mm. of my clients are, are white, old, conservative. I said I couldn't scrub, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to be somebody I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Then I realized as I began to get to the top that none of the people who were at the top dressed like that. Mm. Facts. It was like I'm trying to, I'm trying to dress and be like somebody who don't even exist because right. everybody else trying to do the same thing mm -hmm. it's all fake it till you make it then when i started just like you know what i'm like right now i'm known as like a renegade financial advisor i'm like hall of fame 
But it's like Hall people see me and they say, oh, man, ain't you, ain't you afraid you riding around with, with, with nice luxury cars and getting on planes and stuff like that? You shouldn't be doing that as an advisor, man. People going to think this. They going to think that. So when I see people out in public now, it's like I'm known for being a person that's, that's, that's not afraid as an advisor mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with credentials mm-hmm. to step out and do things different that people are afraid to do. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, and, that, and that's really the secret. That's the recipe. Mm-hmm. Like, how can you highlight your differences more than you're trying to show your similarities? Mm-hmm. Not, just not hide it. Like, be you. Yeah. you know, like, it's not fake. Oh, I, I want to say this for get out of my mind. But last year you had a pool party, man. And I didn't know you then. Right. And I was like, man, damn, I want to be there. Mm, right. Right, 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 right. I was like, but I used to watch all three of y'all, right? This is like a manifestation moment. But I used to watch y'all on, on, online and I used to just watch y'all individually. Like, damn, mm-hmm. like I want to be around these type of guys, right? Mm-hmm. And a year later, like I'm, you know, I hang with y'all. I got yeah. all y'all numbers, yeah. you know right. what I'm saying? Right. And, and I'd, be, I'd be thinking back like, damn, like I really, really did this shit. Yeah, so yeah, I got yeah, invited yeah. to like your house one day and I was like, bro, I'm finally here. <laughs> right, right, yeah, I'm right, finally right. at Marvin yeah. Crib, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But it was like, it was a group of people, like entrepreneurs and stuff, like I wanted to be in that space. I made it happen for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, I, you know, let me not say I don't know how. What I did was I brought value, right? Like yeah. I understood like, let me work on myself and work on my brand. Let me get recognized yeah. for something. And I don't have to like try to, Squeezing nobody's circle. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like people are gonna just reach out and mm. we gonna we gonna click. Like yesterday, y'all good. need me for a, a conference. Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. Like I'm I'm bringing some type of value. So like some people wanna people wanna be around a network of people or this these group of guys or whoever it is. You have to be valuable in some way. You have to become an asset so yeah. people can use you and you can use people. It's not like a negative thing. It's like we build an opportunity even if we never did. You know what I'm saying? We hoop. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. That's all I need from you, story. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like we hoop. That's cool with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but being around you, like you, you feed me knowledge without yeah. even having to try. Like yeah. yo, like, like you just speak life. You know what I'm saying? You too. Like hey, yeah. bro, I got this book. Yeah. Well, shit. I didn't, I didn't think that a year ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we was at, we was at uh, your birthday party. And that's when yeah. I met you. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm saying like you were sitting next to me. You probably didn't remember. You were sitting like right here or something like that. Yeah. You were sitting across from me. I was like yo, what's up? like I was a fan. You didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't get fanned out. Though. I was like yo, this is the from this side of the boat. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but that was this is a, like surreal moment. I, I fuck with you guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I fuck with you guys though. Like yeah, I've been watching y'all for a minute though. Yeah. Like, hey, we, we like, appreciate you, man. man. Everything mm-hmm. you doing, man. You definitely an asset to the yes. community, yeah. to us men especially, man. Yeah, yeah. Like I listen to your messages, I be like. That's the voice right there. That's Thank it. You. That's it. So I appreciate it, man. And it's so, just the beginning, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just the beginning. Right. Just the beginning. Right. Right. But we like yeah. we like the end with what we call a, a gym of the day. The gym of the day. The gym of the day. Uh, that's mm. when we basically less than 60 seconds. Mm-hmm. We put yeah, out. Who you saying that to? You went in like three minutes. I had to say that. I had to say that. Sometimes we go over the 60 seconds. That's the goal. That's the goal. It's supposed to be a real. Uh-huh. It never ends up a real. Oh, it right. ends up a YouTube story. A whole clip, right? <laughs> right. So, so, so you right. go first. Then. All right. Oh man, I wasn't prepared for that. I was about to call old Storm. All right. All right. Yeah, so you ready, Storm? Yeah. All right. So, all right. So we talked about being being different, right? You are nature's greatest miracle. That means nobody is like you. Nobody can walk like you, talk like you, eat like you, sleep like you, breathe like you. So instead of you attempting to be a copycat and see who you can copy. Nobody is better than the original. Mm-hmm. So if you be your authentic self, you be mm-hmm. your original self, somebody else is going to copy you. Mm-hmm. But when they think they're getting close to you, you, you would have surpassed them because you're working on the next thing because you're not focusing on comparing yourself to anybody else. You're focused on being who you need to be, the dream that you have inside. And nobody might be able to see it, but they're going to see it once you've already done it. So by the time they catch up, you're already somewhere else. So focus on being the original and nobody can even copy you. Mm. Mm. Yo, my my gem my gem of the day um, is be of value, right? Be of value. Understand what value you bring out to the world. Uh, be that. Stop trying to do so much. Uh, just be of value. And when you're of value, when you are your natural, authentic self, uh, you're gonna be in a better position to be able to attract and manifest in real life the things that you that you desire. If Jonathan, for whatever reasons, decided that he did not want to be himself and he was trying to be somebody else, then he would not be able to attract 
natural, you know, build real relationships and build this brand that people could actually feel authentically connected with. So as you're building your brand, just be of value by being yourself because there's 8 billion people out in this world, but only one you. Mm. That's a fact. That was good. That was great. That boy good. <laughs> uh, each one of us has a gift. Your character will define how you use that gift. That gift will now let everyone else know who you are as a person. As you manifest what you want to become, don't let the gift destroy your character. And now people will really see who you were from the beginning when all you ever asked for was the attention to be able to attract people with that gift. It's a blessing, not a curse. Use your powers for good and not evil. Mm. Yeah, Bars. Good. All right, no, All right, pressure. no pressure, bro. Let's no go. pressure. pressure. Um, are you struggling with women? Um, <laughs> <laughs> are you being used? Are you being abused? Do you feel like the dating pool is messed up out here? The problem is, is you. It's not the women out here. It's you. You have to focus on yourself. You have to work on self. Women are the byproduct of success. So with me, like, I don't have to struggle. I have to think about, you know, like, <sighs> dating problems. I don't... Only because I worked on self. I get in the gym. I work on like my, my mental. I work on the physical. I work on the spiritual. So once you once you work on on self, once you become that that ultimate God, the ultimate you, you won't struggle in any areas of life. You don't even need that many women. You won't be struggling and and spending money unnecessary money, spending unnecessary time because you know who you are. You're sure of yourself, and you don't have to have a woman to 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 remind you who you are. That's my message to the world. Hope that goes viral. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, if somebody wanted to connect with you, where can they find you? I'm in these streets. <laughs> in these streets? <laughs> Rich and Unemployed on YouTube, Finesse's Only Club um, on Instagram. Any guys that need help that want to join the mentorship, hit me up on Instagram. Click the link. Join the group. Mm. Let's, Let's go. go Let's y'all. All right, so y'all. We Another got, powerful episode yeah, of The Path. We got to remind them that yep. we got a conference. Conference right. coming up. October 27th to the 29th. Link in the bio. Make sure you hit the link in the bio. Go to pathtoprosperityconference.com. Another powerful episode of in the Atlanta. Path to Prosperity podcast. In Atlanta. We I will you. be there. Make sure you're there. Buy the tickets. Let's go. Let's we, get, go. we get to that ATL. prosperity. Let's get it. You know I mean? Right. We help you make, manage, and, and multiply your money. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us, pathtoprosperityshow.com. Nothing about we'll women. You know what I'm saying? We'll see you next <laughs> week. <laughs> Say God's will. Same time, same place. And remember to do what, y'all? Always, Always seek knowledge. knowledge.